Okay, I am going to paint around this. I'm not going to use any liquid mask it. I'm using a round brush. And once I get this background, I'm not worried about it being very smooth and not streaky because I'm going to go back into the background with some other colors. But I would like to do some wet on wet. You'll notice I have my, my paper taped down. So because I have no mask on this, I have to kind of be careful as I'm going around the petals. Oops, forgive me if I'm not showing. I'm trying to look at the paper. And you'll notice I've mixed up some green. Pretty, fairly good amount. Um, it's not a huge area, so didn't have to get a cup out, uh, but I have done that. Like if I'm doing a sky and I'm mixing a color and I don't want to have to run out and go back and uh, risk some of the paint drying if I want it to be a very unstreaky flat. Um, and when I say flat, I don't mean that there's no paper texture, I just mean there's no streaks from the paint. So will look fairly solid right now but I'm gonna do a few things in the background here kind of have fun it's hard for me to look around the camera and see what I'm doing okay I've got another couple more drawn here so I don't want to get interrupt that so you can see where it's starting to dry and just to kind of you know I talked about how if you don't want a lot of movement in your background that's why liquid mask it helps because then you don't have to be careful about you know not going over into the flower or whatever your your object is um, this one didn't matter so much because I don't care if it's flat but I actually did a pretty good job if I just left it like this it would dry fairly flat. It wouldn't have a lot of movement in it because it hasn't, you know, I was able to complete the background without it really any part of it drying. Um, now you can go in with just water and you can drop some, put some water droplets in here, some fairly good sized ones. Um, and then you can be patient and just wait for those to, to do their thing. Um, or clean this brush. You can take paint color and you can kind of add it in there. Just kind of drop it in. Now this will end up you know kind of just blending all in you won't see like um, the yellow probably really this is just pure yellow that I'm adding right now I could go in and blot this up and I might do that I'm not really sure everything that I'm doing um, the yellow I'm losing I'm using with this is not um, this part is kind of dry it's not the lemon yellow but it works pretty good with green. It's a uh, Windsor, no, nope, it's not a Windsor yellow, but it's like a Windsor yellow. It has a little bit of a uh, little hint of orange in it. So here I'm kind of, because the paint is a little bit almost dry, I'm just kind of re-wetting it in these areas. And it'll be just kind of interesting to see what they'll end up doing. Probably won't at this point go in with really dark colors. Um, although I might try to do this stem. A little bit of burnt sienna. Oops, that was quite a bit of burnt sienna. Let's see what that will do if I just paint that stem in there. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit to see if there's going to be any kind of reaction. I'm going to take some neutral colors, like some yellow ochre, and just kind of drop that in there. A 
and into the flower a little bit. No biggie. Maybe go in with a little bit of orangey red. I'm getting some orangey red from my palette on my brush. I want it to be relatively wet. Um, when this dries, it will, it's going to be very pastel. Now you can see this area that I'm painting in right here is, is dried already. But let's try an area that's a little bit wet. So it'll take some time, but that'll start to bleed. And that'll just give me like a little, little bit of color happening in my background here rather than just... the green. If this doesn't dry in a way that I like, I can always go back in and scrub out and change things up a little bit. Um, there is, I would like to kind of go into an area with a little bit darker color too. Hopefully I'm just kind of adding some, some interest and movement. Now I don't, um, I'm not saying you have to use salt all the time, but sometimes it's just, uh, if you use just a little hint of it sometimes, that's, that can add just some interest. If it's real subtle and it's not super obvious what you're doing. So this is, I'm painting into dry paint now. You can always re-wet too. I just put quite a bit of water on that, so I'm going to kind of move that paint around. This area right here that I'm painting into is, is wet, so that will kind of start to seep on the other side of this. Maybe I'll meet up with that. That paint, that red paint that I painted is still wet, so I think I can get it to bleed just ever so slightly. When they're not super wet and it's not completely wet on wet, you can get some really interesting um, kind of slow bleeds, one color into another, where it doesn't completely dissipate the color. When it's real wet on wet, then mm, the colors kind of dissolve into each other and they really blend. Sometimes I like to keep the vibrancy of certain colors and then just kind of try to get them to bleed. And to do that, they have to be almost like on their way to drying. Just make that stem a little bit darker. Go in here with a little bit. This is kind of an olivey color that I'm working with right now. I think these colors are starting to pretty much dry. Oops, I went in. If you get it quick enough, you can kind of save it a little bit. Not a big deal because I, I will be going in with some shadows. This is going to be a white flower. So there's quite a lot of interest and movement in this background now. And it's, I could have just gone with the plain green, but I didn't want to. So I'm using a combination of wet on wet and then meeting up um, areas that are, oh, that's getting quite a shine from the light there. Can't really see it, but 
there. Tilt that a little bit. You'll be able to see it when it dries. Um, if that's still wet there, I'm going to kind of try to soften the edge a little bit. Maybe get it to reactivate it on the on the painting itself. But areas that are kind of dry and the, the wet part seeping into it, that is going to dry really cool. We're going to get some kind of crispy edges, kind of bleeding. They'll continue to kind of bleed for a little bit. The only areas that won't, of course, are the ones that are dry. So I'm going to kind of leave that alone for now. I'm going to go in and um, do the the kind of the innards. I forget what they're called. What is that called? I don't know the. I don't remember the, uh, the parts anymore of the flowers. I used to know them, but <laughs> so I'll do that first. Get a little bit of a pink. I think I'll use some of my permanent rose here. It's a little dirty with the blue, but I'll get back down to that. And I'm gonna mix that with my orangey red. Kind of wet it down a little bit here. Now, the background is wet still, so I wanna try and get some control because I'm gonna kind of draw with, and I don't want to go too long with this video because I tell you, YouTube is really slow with some of these. So, do you see the fine lines I'm able to get? So you can actually draw a little bit with, um, you can do outlines if you have the right brush and it's wet enough got quite a bit of pigment loaded on this so this will stay vibrant this is going to dry a little bit lighter but it's not going to be too much lighter and then I'm going to end this video right now and I might do a time lapse uh, I might go into the background with a little bit of salt too